Good afternoon and welcome to Clarity Auto Details. Today we're going to be installing a ceramic coating on this brand new Range Rover Velour SB Autobiography. Quite the name for quite the car. It's got 550 some odd horsepower. We're going to be doing a full new car paint protection package on it, meaning the wheels are going to get ceramic coated, the glass is going to get ceramic technology on it, and the paint, most of all, is going to get a full blown 9H ceramic coating on it. So, Go ahead and follow us for the process. Okay, so the first step in the ceramic coating process is naturally to wash the car. So we're gonna give it a thorough rinse, um, get all the dirt off the car, um, and get it, you know, ready for the actual agitation wash. Um, which literally, you know, we're just gonna rinse the car top to bottom, get all the loose dirt off the car. Um, it's not gonna be hard. The car is already in. It's already super clean. Uh, we washed it like two weeks ago, um, and it's got bead maker on it, so that keeps it really clean too. Um, so you know, once the paint's actually rinsed, um, we're gonna foam up or froth up our soap in our wash bucket and start washing. So we're using a two bucket wash system here. Um, we do that because the two bucket system actually traps dirt really well. Um, so you. If you, if you think about it, you're actually moving dirt around and getting it into your wash mitt as you're working. Um, so what we do is we rinse out our mitt in the first bucket, uh, which is our rinse bucket, and then uh, we've got our soapy solution in our wash bucket. So the wash water stays super clean um, all the time. And then we actually have uh, this product called a grit guard. It's a plastic insert in the bottom of the bucket um, that's got kind of fins on it uh, and, a, and like, a, like a grate. Um, I'll put something on screen what it looks like um, and basically what it does is it keeps the water from uh, flowing into like a vortex um, Which you know will cause the dirt to flow back up to the top So the dirt naturally sinks to the bottom of the bucket on its own and then the grit guard prevents that vortex from happening Which keeps the dirt on the bottom of the bucket um, So as our soap and water uh, solution we're using PNS Pearl um, it's a great soap, probably the best soap on the market, honestly. It's super, super great, um, super slick, super, super nice. Uh, smells great, suds up well, all the, all the good stuff. So we're also using a rag company cyclone wash mitt. This is like a like a $15 wash mitt, I think. I, I don't even remember, honestly, but it's 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 like the, the luxury wash mitt here. So once we've done the actual soap and water wash, we're just gonna rinse the paint off. Um, get all the soap, all the remaining dirt that might be on there. We're gonna get that off. And you'll, you see I'm working on the wheel right now. Um, that's gonna be the next segment of the video that we'll, you'll see the actual wheel process. But right now, uh, we're just talking about paint. So with the ceramic coating, uh, preparation is key. So you wanna make sure that the paint is totally clean because uh, with the ceramic coating, it actually bonds to the clear coat with the paint. Uh, it actually chemically bonds. Uh, chemically cures and hardens then it becomes an actual layer of actual glass on top of the clear coat that's actually bonded with the clear coat so it, it almost becomes one with the clear coat um, and so you want to you know you know, you want to make sure that that it's prepared properly so with this ceramic coating actually most of the cost comes generally with preparing it not even with actually coating it so actually coating it's not even you know it takes maybe two hours uh, the prep work takes, I mean, I think it took about 10 hours on this car of prep work. So um, prep work's, you know, the main beast. So right now uh, what we're doing is we're spraying it with um, P and S uh, Iron Buster. It's their new iron remover. Um, what an iron remover does is it just um, dissolves embedded iron particles that embed themselves in the paint. This paint obviously really didn't have a whole lot of them. It's got like 300 miles on it, something like that. And... Uh, my customers had it since it came off the plane from England, so it's it's in stellar condition, and it's not it, there. There's really there's really nothing to worry about on the paint. Um, we're actually spreading it with the pressure washer um, again because there, there's not that much work for it to do, um, and any contacts bad contact. So we're really trying to minimize contact because the paint is actually flawless. If you can see it in the sun when it hits the sun on that hood, uh, the paint's actually in flawless condition minus the uh, gloss plaque. The, the gloss black roof um, that that needs to be corrected out because it came swirled but uh, other than that everything's good so um, basically uh, 
you can see uh, Jake's hand motion there. That's our, that, that's one of our employees, Jake. Uh, he's talking about uh, protection and stuff on the paint. As you can see, it's beading. Uh, it's because we got bead maker on it. Um, anyway, that's that's a sign you got protection on the paint. So um, anyway, as we're rinsing off Iron Buster um, again, it's just gonna remove any you know any embedded iron particles that could be on there. Uh, more than likely, they're not. Um, but they could have been on there, so you want to remove them. Um, and then, you know, obviously after that it's done, well, we're just going to dry the paint off. So uh, we're, as um, as we dry the paint, generally we're going to use a product called a drying aid, uh, which is going to be something like Bead Maker uh, or some sort of quick detail spray. Um, just added as added lubrication. You can see there, um, by the way, that that's where you can see the paint's literally is literally flawless. Um, it's actually uh, impeccable how how crazy good the, the paint condition came out of the factory. I've never I've actually never seen paint come from the factory so perfect. So there's not even a buffer trail on the car actually. So it's actually it was impressive. Anyway, so normally we're going to be using a um, some sort of quick detail spray to lubricate. Um, but when we're ceramic coating, we don't want to put anything on top of the paint that we have to take off before the ceramic coating because anything that we put on top of the paint in between the paint and the ceramic coating there you go there's the swirls on the gloss back pillars that will correct later but anything you put in between the paint and the coating is going to help is going to prevent the coating um, from actually adhering so we didn't we didn't use drying aid um, we did however use a rag company platinum pluffle it's a twenty dollar towel um, but it's the softest towel it's the best drying towel on the market. It's the softest. You literally can't scratch a car with it. It's, it's you, you, short of dropping it in the mud and dragging the towel across the car. You wouldn't scratch the car with it. So it's it's a luxurious towel even without a drying aid. So again, the new car protection detail is a wheels off detail because they come off and get ceramic coated. So what we're doing here is we're just jacking up the car uh, with the scissor jack. Um, you know, nothing, nothing really fancy is needed, uh, honestly, you know, people love their little hydraulic jacks, I don't really care, um, it's, it's, you know, do you want to spend money on a hydraulic jack, I don't eat, I don't jack up cars enough to, to justify it, uh, you know, maybe if all we were doing is wheel soft details, maybe I'd invest in one, but that's beside the point, so you'll notice I slid a jack stand underneath there, um, that's because we're going to let the most of the weight of the car on the jack stand. So you'll see me inspecting it and then asking Jake to come over and inspect it with me um, so that we get two perspectives on the jack stand just to double check that it's in the correct uh, placement uh, somewhere that, where it's going to sit well with the car and we're not going to have to worry about it falling off the jack stand because, um, you know, for clear reasons, uh, for clear safety reasons, also clear, you know, checkbook reasons, uh, you don't want a Land Rover uh, velour autobiography falling off a jack stand so now I'm just gonna clean the wheels um, PNS brake buster uh, paired with a detail factory brush and a Chanel microfiber wash mitt and then iron buster to remove the little bit of iron that's um, there's a little there's little pockets inside the behind the spokes of the wheels so um, they trapped a little bit of brake dust in the 300 miles that this car has been driven so uh, just a little bit of iron bust, buster to dissolve that up and then it's going to get a really light clay the clay in this case is really just to make sure it's clean um, it probably did, didn't need it the paint didn't need it and I really doubt the ne wheels needed it I just did it you know as an extra little precaution so but I'm going to dry the paint off using the tornador along with a microfiber towel because the Tornador obviously isn't going to get everything. Uh, Tornador is just a compressed air tool. Um, more on that later, maybe. Um, so we're going to flush out the wheel wells. Um, they're frontline wheel wells. Luckily, they're not super dirty yet. Uh, these these things tend to hold grease and grime, but I'm going to flush them out with the pressure washer, spray them with super clean diluted 10 to 1. Super clean is an all-purpose cleaner degreaser. Um, on the brake calipers, we actually used a little bit of iron buster. You can see we sprayed it on there. 
uh, because there's, you know, obviously there's brake dust on it. There's the frig they're the freaking brake calipers, so you know, clearly you're gonna have some iron on there because you know that's what brake dust is. It's little flakes of iron. Anyway, that's a fun fact you probably didn't need to know. So after I clean the wheel wells while it's drying, uh, we're gonna be coating the the uh, actual wheels, and then after the wheels are coated, we're gonna coat the caliper. It's just kind of nice, you know, while the wheels are drying, we clean the wheel wells. While the wheel wells are drying, we coat the wheels. Yeah. Just, just nice to uh, work efficiently like that. So, uh, first off, obviously we're gonna polish the wheels um, with a very, very light, very, very non abrasive uh, combination. It's a Carpo gloss pad with Carpo Essence. Carpo Essence is a finishing slash jeweling polish. It's like a level two on the cut. You know, if ten was the highest cut, two, uh, one was the lowest cut, is a level two. Um, so it's not gonna it's not gonna remove any defects it's not gonna remove any whatever it's just a ceramic coating primer and that's 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 all we're using it for here it's just a prime the wheel for the ceramic coating uh, it is gonna give some pretty insane gloss which you can you can really see in the inner barrel on camera um, even already before we polished it, it was insane uh, just wait till we add until after it gets polished the, the, the inner barrels looked crazy and you know it doesn't quite show it on camera as well but the actual faces of the wheels, you know, the spokes, those look really good. So you can actually see on camera right here those little pockets that I was talking about um, that kind of held onto the rag dust. Uh, we're going to ceramic coat those just so that they can get, um, you know, just so hopefully they don't, you know, hold onto a ton of rag dust. And I doubt they will. Um, but these wheels, given those pockets, are probably going to need to come off the car maybe once a year, uh, maybe after two years once the coating's worn off. Uh, with the driving hats, the with the driving habits of my client, uh, they're, they're they're not gonna be bad. He he takes care of his car like like crazy. So um, here I'm from, now you know once once it's uh, ready, we're gonna wipe it with a prep spray. I didn't get that on video. Uh, I don't know where the file went. I swear I recorded it, but who knows? So we wiped it with a prep spray. That's carbon eraser. Gonna remove all the polishing oils. And now what I'm actually doing is applying the ceramic coating. So you can see I just apply a little, a few little dots uh, to the applicator pad um, and then, you know, wipe it in as level as possible. Um, and then we'll go back and level it with a leveling towel here. Um, that's just to get it uh, super, super level. Uh, make sure it's finished out to the point where there's no high spots that, you know, you're going to notice when the, when the coating is fully cured. So this coating is Carpro Deluxe. It's a high temperature. Um, wheel and plastic coating um, gonna last about one to two years um, again the way my client takes care of his car this this coating I I wouldn't be surprised to get um, three years out of it easily um, you know we've got this this same coating actually applied on his wife's car um, and it's been about eight months and she drives that you know every day and through the Utah winter um, it's it's held up like new so it's actually it's a fantastic coating um does does great work especially if you maintain it right so um definitely recommend carpa deluxe if you're looking for a good wheel uh, and high temperature area coating so you can see i'm making uh, a special effort to make sure we get inside of those little those little holes in the back of the spokes just to just to make sure they, they stay clean this area it's never abraded um so the coating is going to last as long as on the back of the spokes because they're never abraded to clean it. So uh, honestly, it's probably not going to be. It's going to take a little bit of iron decon to remove the brake dust once the, once the they need to be recoated. Um, but other than that, it, it'll be good. So here I've got the wheel, you know, just just right into pseudo place, um, just so it's right there for me. And then I raise it up on the jack stand to get it high enough to put it on. You can see I'm a little OCD, so I put the locking wheel nut on top, uh, along with that Land Rover center cap, <laughs> actually uh, level with with that, and then there's a valve stem cover down there, also in line with it, and it also says Land Rover on it, so we, we I, I tightened them to the exact point where the, the, the valve stem Land Rover logo and the, the center cap Land Rover logo were, were in line with each other, along with that... Uh, locking lug nut with the, which this car actually has um just one locking lug nut per wheel i uh, also put that you know in a, just in a straight line so 
what I did is, you know, I, I'm obviously, I just, um, I just removed the jack stand, and then I make sure that they're, uh, actually just, pretty much just finger tight, maybe a little bit more than finger tight. I'm going in a circle, because it really doesn't matter at this point, um, and then I'm just gonna double check them by going in the star pattern. So, you'll, you'll see here, I'm just gonna double check that they're, you know, as tight as I want them to be before I drop the car. Um, and that I'm gonna do in a star pattern. Uh, but when you're just originally tightening them, it's not that big of a deal to do it in the star pattern. So, let's do that. I'm going to lower it off the jack stand and torque each lug nut to spec uh, with most of the most of the car's weight on the wheel. Um, I'm just going to torque them all to spec using a torque wrench. Now, again, torquing, that does need to be done in the star pattern to make sure you're doing it right. Um, but yeah, they were torqued to, I believe it was 98 foot pounds. I don't remember. Um, we read the owner's manual right before and then set the torque wrench to that and kind of forget about it. So I think it was 98 pounds, but whatever it was, it was it was close to close to 100 foot pounds of torque. So anyway, each wheel was torqued to that specification. Now we're moving on to the polishing. So like I said, preparation is key. Polishing is part of the preparation, um, unfortunately. Uh, even on perfect paint like this, it still needs a, a, a slight polish. So what we're doing is we're taping off our um, test spot to see what the polish combination is going to do. Um, while the paint is, you know, 99% perfect, there was a couple little uh, spider webs. Uh, I like to call them just, just straight random uh, love marks, kind of that you'll, that you'll see. Um, who knows? You know, it's probably covered during transport, and that's my theory of where they would have come from along with actually all those swirls on the on the gloss black uh, roof but that's beside the point so ppf on the hood uh ppf on the front bumper um that's why those are taped like that because we don't we we don't polish ppf that's it's not really a good idea because it's it's a it's a film on the car it's not actually clear coat so you don't really want to polish it um, but the polish combination we used was um a Carpro gloss pad and Carpro Essence just like I was using on the wheels um, and so we're just gonna wipe it off after one pass on the test spot um, both of us will inspect it um, and decide after after that one pass if we need to do a second pass if we need to change up the pad polish combination um, in this case luckily the first one that we came up with worked perfectly uh, exactly what we wanted so uh, the paint came out flawless um, with literally just almost nothing so it's gonna prime the ceramic coating for its actual its actual bonding to the paint. So um, this this actual polish that we're using is actually meant to prime uh, the paint for ceramic coating, which is just gonna make the ceramic coating process much 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 simpler, make the coating last even longer as well. So.
So finishing touches, installing the ceramic coating. Now first things first, you can actually see Jake in the background polishing the gloss black pillars. We didn't get any video of actually just polishing those or the after footage after, you know, with Sorrel free. But for the record, he did we did do the, you know, the whole gloss back pillar thing. We just, you know, ended up losing out on video. So first step is going to be blowing off the paint, getting rid of any dust. Next up, Carpro Erase Eraser with an Eagle Edgeless 500 towel. Carpro Eraser, again, gonna remove the polishing oils and get the paint ready for coating. Next up, apply C Quartz UK 3.0 and then level it using a three towel method. Super simple, first two towel are pearl weave towels, second is a micro suede towel. Um, and this is going to jewel the paint to absolute perfection. Um, this specific coating is going to last approximately three years on this paint. Um, depending on the way you maintain your car and depending on uh, the way you drive your car uh, and store your car, you're going to see different results. But I expect about three years out of the coating on this specific car. So this is the whole process. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Here's the big reveal.